Hello and welcome back everyone. My name is Richard Schneeman. I am here today to talk to you a little bit more about databases. In the first part of this class, we uh, talked about the web being data, why you even want to store data, how it's used, how it's everywhere around us. And so we kind of wanted to get into a little bit more uh, concrete example. So when we start talking about representing data, um, most people start thinking uh, in terms of forms and spreadsheets. So I've gone ahead and I've created a spreadsheet here. We, it is the uh, users spreadsheet, the users table inside of a spreadsheet, and we have a couple of different columns. Here we have a, a name column, we've got a uh, movie column, both of those are going to be string types. We've got a number column, which uh, a favorite number column I should say, and that's going to be an integer, and we also have a likes Fanta column. So this is going to be a boolean, true or false. In um, databases while we're storing things it's important that we know what what type it is. Um, we can do different things with uh, with different types for for instance if we are have a number then we can do less than or greater than comparison so if we ask the database give me all of the uh, you know favorite numbers that are greater than three we could do that you know it would be rich it'd be Ruby and James um, in 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 general, um, we will be querying against different attributes of the um, of the table. So we could look for, say, a user that has a name of Chris. And um, what a database will do, a database will uh, actually go in there and do what is um, what is called a uh, a scan, a sequential scan, and it will basically say, you know, is this name Chris? No. Is this name Chris? No. Is this name Chris? Yes and it will return all of this information. Um, we can speed that up a little bit with uh, some, you know, with some indexes. Uh, we also also wanted to make a, uh, a point of, of just noting in this scenario, um, a column represents a person. So, or sorry, a row represents a person. And right now, the only unique way we have of representing that same person uh, or ad identifying that unique person is a name. So this makes perfect sense for, for most people, but computers, um, not as much. So we can actually have people named the same thing. Uh, there's certainly more than one Chris in the world. And let's say, you know, tomorrow Rich goes out and changes his name officially uh, to Richard. So he's no longer called uh, Richard. Previously, if there's a query that was expecting it to be rich, it would say, you know, are you rich? No. Are you rich? No. Are you? Are you? And it would not be able to find them. So uh, in databases, a lot of times we have a separate key that will be a way um, to act as a pointer to these records, and it will it will be called a primary key. So a lot of times that's going to be an ID. That's going to be an integer. So that would be one, two, three, four, and so on. And the, these, um, the main point of the IDs is that you know anything in this row can change. You know the favorite, your favorite movie might change uh, to Anchorman, but it doesn't mean that you as a person you're still the same person even though your attributes are different. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out here is that uh, we have in our like Svanta column, Chris, his, uh, his value is actually null. So it, it doesn't exist. This doesn't mean it's a string that says does not exist. It, it literally, in a, as far as the database is concerned, it's, um, it's just blank. In terms of a spreadsheet, we'd actually probably just do that. We would just keep it as empty. But um, for a database, we'll most likely do, we, it would be called null. So you can query things that are null and are not null. Um, so Booleans are going to have two, two states, a true state and a false state, as well as a null state. So um, a lot of this seems, you know, just make uh, common sense so far, so good. Um, but uh, where a lot of people end up getting confused is they associate... Um, 
programs with uh, with icons and things that you you run on your computer. For instance, if you wanted to open up a spreadsheet, then you would first open up um, you you know you open up Google Docs or on a Mac you'd open up the, this is called Numbers, and then you open up a specific file. Uh, databases don't necessarily run. Uh, from something that we would normally consider to be an application. A lot of times databases are running on the system level and they are initialized from start. Uh, you can access them pretty much through a port which is very standard on Unix but um, you know what this all means is the way that we interact with databases is not going to be standard. It's not going to be through a one file. We don't, um, databases don't keep their data all just in one file. Um, they are built to um, access data in a you know you know very very efficient way they can they're built to store data in a very very efficient way you can imagine if we you know if we wanted to keep on going and keep on saying you know adding new new people to this let's say we were actually building this into a website and you know people logged in and they um, you know people new visited new people visited the site uh, Sarah you know signs up and you know, tells us her favorite movie and a favorite number and, uh, and you know whether they like FANA or not. Um, if we kept on actually just putting it into the same spreadsheet, into the same file, it would just get longer and longer and longer and longer. Eventually it would get take a really long time to open up. Um, so databases, uh, and the reason for that is um, reading things off of disk takes quite a bit of time. Even if you're reading off of a, an SSD or um, and when I say disk, I mean a hard drive. So if you have a spinning hard drive or you have an SSD, it's going to take a lot longer than the speed of reading it out of RAM. Um, so databases are built to kind of balance that um, and to try to keep a fair amount of records actually in RAM. Um, so uh, another thing to consider whenever you're storing data is um, the efficiency of accessing it. Yes, it would take a long time to just load up this, then it would also take a long time to write code that would actually go through and say, you know, are you Chris, are you Chris, are you Chris, and, and finally to arrive on that, um, that element versus uh, databases that's already optimized. It's already uh, using, just using their out-of-the-box solution is going to be much, much quicker than we could devise. Um, now, whenever I say database, I'm talking about a relational data, data store. We can use other non-relational data stores or, or, you know, a lot of people call them NoSQL, and we will get into that much later. Um, so uh, some other things I wanted to point out, this up at the top, this description, these names of columns along with the types of columns would be referred to as schema. This is how we describe our, um, our table. So for instance, we wouldn't, it would not allow us to store uh, you know, a value of 23 into a name field. Um, we could just, you know, we could do a string of 23 and that would be completely different, but not the actual integer of 23. Um, finally, we want to, we want to, I guess, consider cost. We want to consider cost and scale when we are talking about data stores. Um, it wouldn't make any sense, or it wouldn't make much sense for us to, when we start getting ten thousand and a hundred thousand and you know millions of um, of records to uh, just install Excel uh, or uh, Numbers, whatever program you're using on all these different um, different boxes. So it actually makes sense to use a program, a dedicated program that is just uh, built for that. So, you know, you, you've kind of seen this is sort of like a, a fake database and a lot the way a lot of people envision databases in their heads. Um, let's go ahead and actually uh, take a database for a spin. So here I am in my terminal and I will be using a database called Postgres. It's a very fast, very performant open source database. Um, there are many different types, but uh, Postgres is one of my favorite. So I've um, already got it running, and I can just type PSQL. And now we are in the database console. We can type help and get more information. Um, the first thing we're going to do is create a database. So create database. Uh, and we're going to call it data testing. make sure the semicolons at the end 
So that created the database. Now we want to move on and actually use that database. So we're going to go into that database. So data testing. Now we are connected to data testing as user schemes. That is my the uh, user I'm logged in as on the computer. You can assign different roles uh, to your database. So the next thing I want to do is create a table. So I'm going to do uh, create table users. I'm going to split this into multiple lines. So the first um, column is going to be a name and that's going to be a var char uh, 255. That's um, that's how we represent a string. We're saying it's variable length of characters up to 255 characters. That would be a string. Uh, then we had, what else we have? We had a movie. That is also varchar. Uh, 255. And then we're going to kind of cut it short. Um, number. And that was int. Um, and that should be it. Okay, so now we've got our table. We've got our users table. If you do slash D, you can actually list that uh, that table. Or you can do slash D um, users and it will give you the schema of this table. This is the column names as well as the column types. So let's actually go ahead and insert some data into that table. We can do that using the insert command. Insert, here, let's clear this. Insert into users. Um, we're gonna do name, movie, uh, number. The values are gonna be Richard, the movie is going to be Zoolander, and the number is going to be 9. Finish that off with a semicolon. All right, so it looked like that worked. Um, how do we know? So uh, when your table is very small, we can do select star from the table. Select is going to be how we are going to, to look up data. Um, anytime we are manipulating and storing data, we have four basic operations, a create, read, update, and delete. Um, we just uh, created, we just inserted was the creation. Into read, we will be selecting. So select star, and star is kind of a keyword that just says everything. Um, so we can just do select star from users. Okay, so there you go. We have exactly one user in our um, in our user table and it tells us one row. You wouldn't want to do this on a very large table. Um, if you wanted to just select one user from that, we could give it uh, something, a little bit of a narrower scope. So you can say where uh, movie equals Zoolander. And it'll, it'll just return that, um, where the movie is uh, Zoolander. Maybe that, let's add Another record, so um, we had Ruby and uh, Princess Bride, and then favorite number of 25. There you go. Um, so if we, I go back up to select star from users, we can see we've got two users. And I can do the select where movie equals Zoolander, and you only receive one. Or I could do um, see number uh, greater than 10. So um, we're looking for a number greater than 10. Would 25 would satisfy that. Uh, so there you go. That's that's the the basics of just kind of using a database. We're interfacing it uh, using a SQL um, and. Uh, if you are curious about the performance of this, we can actually run, ask the database to um, give us data in terms of how long it takes to run one of these queries. So let's, uh, on this one, you, we can run um, explain and then analyze. And so we ran explain, analyze, select star from users where numbers greater than 10. 
it's going to give us the query plan. It's going to tell us it's a sequential scan on users. So it's individually going over each user and looking at their number. Um, it's going to give us a theoretical cost and the number of rows. Um, and then finally, it is going to give us the actual total runtime. So Finally, it is going to give us the actual total runtime, 0 0.036 milliseconds, um, which is a very, very, very small amount of time. Now, as we do increase the number of records in here, of course, it will, um, that, that runtime will increase, but um, still, ideally, what you're looking for is a runtime on the order of milliseconds each time. Um, we can speed things up using uh, smart indexing as well as uh, separating out some data into different relations, but we will be saving that for next week. This was just kind of, a, a again, a basic introduction into um, what that data would look like inside of a database, how we can put that data in the database, as well as um, table schemas and querying the database using a couple of, uh, of different methods and finally seeing the performance of that database. So uh, databases are very incredibly performant. They've been around for quite a while. They're very mature. And uh, when we build our web apps and our web applications, this is actually how we are going to be storing the data. Um, you know, whenever you um, create a new post onto, onto Facebook, it actually translates into uh, one of these SQL statements and it is going to a database in Facebook server and, and saving that post into a, uh, into a table on one of Facebook servers. So we're going to emulate that and, and learn um, how we can do that and how we can make uh, our relations and the relational part of the database really work for us. So my name again is Richard Schneeman. Thank you very much for tuning in.